Once we have the concept of solution, we can introduce another concept called electrolyte. Called electrolyte. It is a substance of phase that primarily conducts electrically charged. Pay attention to this word ions, not so much electrons or missing of electron, which people call hole. And this substance can also be that something that upon dissolution in a solvent to form a solution and then form charged ions in the solution state. So that is electrolyte. It is a phase of substance that either by itself conducts electrically charged ion, not so much electrons or holes, or it could be a substance that when it is dissolved in a solvent to form solution, and in the solution it forms charged ions. Okay, that's a concept. Now we give examples. So there are different categories. The first could be molten or liquid electrolyte. There would be no solvent involved or no obvious solvent involved. The example could be molten sodium chloride, molten potassium chloride or zinc chloride. These types of salt, when you heat it up to high enough temperature, they become a liquid and in that liquid there will be charged metal ions, sodium ion, as well as chlorine ion. It could also be electrolyte solution in a typically solvent or solvents. Okay. And we could have potassium chloride dissolved in water and over that solution there will be hydrated potassium ion positively charged and chlorine ion negatively charged. And this would be an electrolyte, quite often bracket, solution. And we could also have so-called solid electrolyte. These are liquid electrolyte. This could be solid electrolyte. And the examples could be sodium iodide. By itself, it has a high concentration of, sorry, silver iodide, silver ion and iodine ion. Another example could be atria stabilized the cornea, or YSZ. And here the charged ion could be oxide ion. Sometimes we also call it oxygen vacancy, as well as the lattice on immobile cations. Okay, the another example for polymer, that's a famous naphene polymer, and it conducts primarily proton or hydrogen positively charged ions. So all these are so-called electrolyte. It could be a molten or liquid electrolyte by itself. It could be a solid electrolyte. It could also be a substance dissolved in a liquid solvent to form charged ions. Okay. With the concept of solution and electrolyte, now let's talk about electrolyte solution versus non-electrolyte solution. So what is electrolyte solution? It is a solution that has electrolyte dissolved in it. In particular, the solute, the substance of the solute, whether they are polar or ionic, polar such hydrogen chloride or ionic such as sodium chloride, when they are dissolved in liquid solvent, sometimes can be more, more than one solvent, those solute dissociated, dissociated completely or partially into positively and negatively charged ions. And each of those ions, positive or negative, are surrounded by solute molecules. This process is the dissolution of 
electrolyte solute. And they give us so-called electrolyte solution. And a good example would be sodium chloride dissolved in water. And here is a schematic that I borrowed. Sodium chloride is a typical salt, and uh, it is an ionic compound, ionic, with positively charged sodium ion and a negatively charged chlorine ion. And the mole water molecules are polar. The oxygen part would selectively got attracted to the positively charged sodium ion, while the negatively charged chlorine ion would attach to the hydrogen side of a water molecule. And then the end result would be for this sodium chloride crystal to dissolve in water with the chlorine ion surrounded by water molecules. At the same time, the smaller positively charged sodium ion are also surrounded by water molecules. And this process would, would be what we call dissolution of electrolyte in solutions. And remember, again, both positively charged ions such as sodium and the negatively charged ions such as chlorine are surrounded by polar solvent molecules, in this case, water molecules. Okay, so this gives us the electrolyte solution. The similar case is happening for polar molecules such as hydrogen chloride. And another thing that we want to mention is that for electrolyte solution that is made of weak electrolyte, such as acetic acid in the solution, we could have both positive and negatively charged ions as well as the whole molecule, acetic acid whole molecule. And some of those molecules do not dissociate into ions. That's why we call them weak electrolyte solutions. And hopefully this is what you already learned in uh, high school or college chemistry. In comparison to electrolyte solution, we may also come across non-electrolyte solution. Non-electrolyte solution are uh, essentially the solute molecules remain as molecules, which means they are electrically neutral. They do not form positive or negatively charged ions upon in contact with solvent. An uh, example would be sugar water molecule. The sugar or uh, sucrose, they are molecular compound, but when they are dissolved in water, each of the molecules remain more or less intact. It does not dissociate into positive or negatively charged ions. They remain as a whole as electrically neutral molecule, but they are still surrounded as a whole by water molecules. So this is what we would see in such a solution. We do not have ions surrounded by water. We only have neutral molecules, small molecules, individual molecules surrounded by water. And such solution we would call non-electrolyte solution because we do not have charged positive or negatively charged ions. We do not have in this case. So electrolyte solution versus non-electrolyte solution. In electrolyte solution, we have positive or negatively charged ions surrounded by water molecules or other solvent molecules. But for non-electrolyte solution, we have neutral molecules surrounded by solvent, in this case, water molecules. And in this case, in this course, our primary focus would be for electrolyte solutions with positive 
and the negatively charged ions. Now for electrolyte solutions, there are both strong electrolyte solution and weak electrolyte solution. Let's first talk about strong electrolyte solution. Here we are looking at sol solute, electrolyte solutes that got complete dissociation into cations or positively charged ions and anions which are negatively charged ions. Complete dissociation. This happens for strong salts such as sodium chloride or for strong acid such as uh, hydrochloric acid or for strong base such as sodium hydroxide. Here we give the example of sodium chloride when it is dissolved in water all of it would dissociate into completely dissociate into positively charged sodium ion or sodium cation and the negatively charged chlorine ion or chlorine anion. Hopefully this is what you learned. And for acid, strong acid such as hydrochloric acid or HCl, hydrogen chloride, when it is in dissolved in water, the molecule dissociate into positively charged proton or hydrogen ion, hydrogen cation, as well as chlorine ion, negatively charged, we also call chlorine anion. So these are examples of strong electrolyte solutions. Electrolyte, when dissolved in solvent, the electrolyte completely dissociate into positively charged cation and the negatively charged anions. In comparison, there are also so-called weak electrolyte solutions. And uh, for weak electrolyte solution, when the electrolyte solute got dissolved in solvent, typically water, we would have, pay attention, incomplete dissociation of molecules into cations and anions. Molecules, or I would also say crystals, into positively charged cations and negatively charged anions, but it is an incomplete dissociation process. A example would be acetic acid. Acetic acid. CH3COOH. Acetic acid, and when it is dissolved in water, some of the acetic acid solution would form positively charged proton cation and acetic acid group CH3COO minus anion, but some of the molecule would still remain as the acetic acid molecule, a neutral molecule. Some of the molecule would remain undissociated, would remain as a whole molecule, okay? And this, this case would be called weak electrolyte solution. And hopefully in college or in high school you learned the uh, dissociation constant concept such as dissociation constant, okay?